The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. On an all-new Getriel, Phil Price hike and unpopularity. In a move not expected at the moment as the nation is fighting a pandemic, the current government spikes prices of fuel, sending shockwaves across the country. The government says this was the only option available after considering four other alternatives. Despite the country enjoying one of the lowest fuel prices in the world, this decision managed to bring in fractures never seen before and an open to the opportunistic opposition to milk the situation. Joining me to answer and give the government's point of view tonight, I'm honored to welcome back the Minister of Energy, Uday Gamman Pillar. From Studio 24, with opinions that matter, it's time to get real with Mahesh Jani. And a very good evening everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to join me on Get Real this Monday night as well. Uh, well, COVID seems to be the one that everybody wants to discuss because it is still we are in the midst of a pandemic. But last week things changed a bit. We've been talking about a different subject, a fuel price hike. And then, uh, you know, things ensued. We all know what happened. Uh, everybody started talking about the cascading effects of fuel prices. Uh, the minister was accused and then uh, a little bit of a split seems to be arising in the ruling party. Um, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, why was the fuel increased? There's only one person who can answer all this, the person who is responsible for the, for the hike and uh, pretty much uh, behind, uh, in, in headlines these days. Minister of Energy, uh, Udega Manpila, welcome back to the program. You're coming back at a very crucial moment. Uh, good to see you, sir. I know you're in thick of things uh, at the moment, but that, that is also a very good place to be because you get to explain yourself and this here you ego, we're trying to get the same thing right now. Um, you increase fuel prices and you, uh, d during the past week, you explained as to why. Uh, let me ask again the same question. What, why are we going for a fuel price hike? Because fuel price hike means everything else is also going to go up. We are in, a, in the midst of a pandemic. People uh, are still not uh, working as they used to work. Daily uh, wage earners, all these people are going to be suffering because of this decision. So what was the real reason? What was so important that this had to be done at this moment? Well. Uh, first of all, when you said you increase the price, I'm, I'm very much <laughs> hopeful that you didn't mean Udaya government Pila, or Minister but of Energy, you know, but the government. Yes, exactly. Because this is not, an, not a decision made by me individually. This was Obviously. A, this was a decision uh, which had been deliberated for more than four months. Uh, when we have, we had uh, uh, twofold problems. Firstly, because of the huge losses, F prices were going up. In fact, losses where? Now let me explain. Uh, as all of us know, uh, last April 2020 recorded the lowest uh, oil prices in the recent mm. history. Thereafter, slowly but surely, it began to uh, increase the prices and since November 2020 it had been sharply and sharply increasing so we couldn't uh, we couldn't we as a result uh, Ceylon Petroleum Corporation as well as Indian uh, oil company were making huge losses so in those Sri Lanka yes therefore that there are only two uh, full uh, retail retailers in the country uh, Petroleum Corporation and LIOC. So they made their submissions to me. Thereafter, I talked to the 
treasury three times from november to february and got the prices revised they got you know during the, as i when i uh, i said that prices were extremely low in the in the year of uh, 2020 during that time government had imposed a tax huge tax on the uh, uh, imported petroleum products mm -hmm. uh, because of that profits of the, at the advantage of the low prices were not enjoyed by the people. Uh, not not to, but not by the people or the, not by the retailers but by the government by way of taxes therefore when prices were going up i met the treasury secretary three times and with great difficulty with a great pain i was able to convince the treasury to reduce the taxes to facilitate the continuity of oil importation then by march they informed me no sir we can't uh, we can't do like uh, like this anymore so we have to go for a price revision then i explained the treasury the, yes then i explained the situation to the cabinet on 15th of march uh, then cabinet appointed a subcommittee to resolve the energy crisis in Sri Lanka, the committee was chaired by the Prime Minister himself in his capacity as the Minister of Finance. This committee met uh, three times and uh, in the end decided to increase the prices and advised me to get the President's nod. So I met the President with, the, with my Ministerial Secretary, uh, DR, uh, DR, DAR Olga and uh, President was with the Presidential Secretary as well as the Treasury Secretary and we in depth analysis, analyzed the situation and he wanted me to uh, place this issue before the Cabinet Subcommittee on Cost of Living, again chaired by the President with the particip participation of the Prime Minister and other senior ministers and he wanted me to prepare different options. So we prepared four different options and explained this in detail. Then only that committee what decided. What are those options? Firstly, one option was to uh, get the entire loss from the respective fall. For instance, we were losing 14 rupees from petrol, 92 and auto diesel. But considering the uh, impact on the cost of living, we decided to not to increase by, by, by each product to cover the cost instead we we increase uh, diesel only by 7 rupees and uh, then we are to lose another 7 rupees for each liter in order to cover that 7 rupees we increase petrol only by uh, 6 rupees uh, yes 20, 23 uh, additional 6 rupees yeah, okay by 20 rupees anyway we had to increase 14 rupees for to cover the cost incurred uh, uh, by selling petrol. In addition to that, we add only 6 rupees. In fact, we are selling 3,000 metric tons of petrol for a day, but 5,500 diesel. Then in order to cover the loss uh, caused by diesel sale, we have to increase, uh, now we, we have to cover 7 more mm -hmm. rupees. We have to, if we are, if we are to cover from petrol, we have to increase it by 13 rupees, additional 13 rupees to cover the diesel because volume is, diesel sales volume are higher than the petrol sales volume. But frankly, we have not fully covered the loss caused by the diesel yeah, sale. Yeah. Then if you take uh, kerosene, we are selling at, we were selling at 70 rupees. We increased by 7 rupees, now it's at 77 rupees, but our cost is 102 rupees. We are losing even after the price increase, we are losing 25 rupees for each kerosene liter we sell. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, those are the options. So, the, the, so that I just explained this was not a my decision. This of was an entire government decision. The Usually, this was announced by the Minister of Finance. Our Minister of Finance is um, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa. Therefore, I thought, I thought that. He, being the Prime Minister, he may not be able to come before the media and explain the difficulties faced by the government. So I volunteered to Take uh, <laughs> announce this unpopular decision for the betterment of the nation. It, it is understandable. Uh, 
people put you all into power not to make uh, uh, you know senior bowler decisions uh, you have to make the tough call at the tough that's time that's the same in india politicians make decisions keeping the next election in mind but statesmen make the decisions keeping the future generations in mind in my case i want to be a statesman instead of a politician uh, i mean it is understandable that the government collectively actually would have gone i mean if there was another option that that uh, uh, supported uh, the people definitely we would have actually uh, uh, you know gone for that understandable now there are cascading effects uh, fuel prices goes up uh, now the bakery owners wants to say they want to increase uh, bakery product prices uh, and then they uh, you know there is always that so uh, what is what is the plan there because you know you can't just increase and keep your uh, you know hands tied and say oh we did this I'm sorry 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 but you need to address uh, to the people uh, the ones who are actually facing these difficulties vegetable prices will go up uh, um, at this time what is the solution there what, what has the government uh, 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 well uh, let me answer in two different ways firstly we considered the impact on the cost of living that's why we have acted in this manner. Firstly, uh, unless we unless we inc we increase the petrol price by huge amount, why? To compel the people to uh, consume uh, petrol in an economic manner to reduce their consumption, because we need we can somehow find rupees. That's not a big issue. The government can print. Uh, ru uh, yeah. ru uh, ru rupee notes, I mean 1,000 or 5,000, whatever, they can print. But our actual problem is foreign currency, dollars. Because we need at least 300 million, I'm repeating the figure, 300 million dollars for every month to import petroleum products. That's a huge amount in yeah. any standard. You may recall, our Prime Minister was the chief guest at the National Day celebrations in Bangladesh. At that time, President uh, requested for a loan. The loan amount we received was 200 million US. It is not that sufficient. That was a currency swap. That's right. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's yeah. in the air for, for the understanding of the general yeah. public. It's a loan, yeah. right? It's somehow it provides what, what, uh, the foreign uh, currency, what we require. So, uh, it was 200 million it's not sufficient to yeah. cover one month petroleum product importation bill previous month with great celebration the government announced that we obtain a uh, short term loan of 500 million us from china it's not it's a big loan but it's not sufficient to cover two months import bill of petroleum products so we, because of our and sri lankan government has uh, foreign reserves, foreign currency reserves, including gold deposit, amount to three billion dollars. Entire government foreign reserves are sufficient only to bring petroleum for ten months. So this is the situation. Therefore, we have no choice but to reduce the importation of the petroleum products. So we don't have enough foreign currency to continue this importation at this level. Uh, then, let me explain yeah. this bit. I'm so sorry. We know the impact on the cost of living. We consider two issues. What, what is the impact of the cost of living? By increasing diesel by 6%. Yes, all transport, uh, then uh, good transportation, passenger traveling, all cost will of those will, will be increased. increased. On the other hand, unless we do this, there will be a huge pressure on the dollar. Dollar will go up. Then what is the impact on cost of living? All imported goods from medicine to food, other essential items, machineries, industrial items, industrial inputs, all fertilizer, all will go up. Then we considered what is the best out of the worst two. <laughs> now, take the dollar. At the end of 2014, dollar was trading at 131 rupees. It is now 203 rupees. The depreciation dollar has appreciated by nearly 60 percent. Now diesel has been increased only by six percent. Then we realize cost of living caused by the full price hike would be better than the uh, impact brought by the dollar appreciation. That's why we chose the worst out of the, the best out of the worst two. 
<laughs> it is, I, I understand it's a very difficult situation, but we can't be doing this over and over again. If, if, if we are making losses from one side, if the Petroleum Corporation uh, is making losses uh, in gigantic amounts, it's not like, you know, a small amount, in gigantic amounts, and then, you know, uh, every single uh, time we are trying to uh, say, you know, we have to buy from somewhere, uh, other country, you know, you just said, the whole reserve we have is only for 10 months. What is the petrol, solution? Petrol, 10 only months for only for petrol. petrol. If you go the, just imo, uh, if you consider the entire import bill, only for three months. Less so, than three months. So, <laughs> is this country heading towards Zimbabwe? We are heading for a disaster. We like it or not. We should, you know, different people have different views. Some people think, no, we should not upset the nation. We should not uh, make the people unhappy, we should not make the people frightened. But in my case, I think politicians should always communicate with the nation with the truth, nothing but the truth. Then only people will have a confidence on us. Then only they will adjust their lifestyle. When they know, if they know we are in a crisis, they will adjust themselves. But if you paint a very rosy picture, then they will complain, look, uh, we, are, we are having hardships, we can't maintain our lifestyle, bring us some comfort. So we should tell the bitter truth to the people. That's what I strongly believe. That's what I am doing at the moment. You just got real with, with the people. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, I'm in conversation with the Minister of uh, Energy, Udega Manpila, uh, with regard to the fuel price hike and, and the cascading effects. Uh, beyond that, you're watching Get Real Uber. I'm in conversation with the Minister of Energy, uh, Uday Gambanpila, with regard to the current fuel price hike and the cascading effects of it. Uh, sir, uh, pri like when the good governance government engaged in uh, uh, you know, a formula, uh, the uh, Sri Lanka Podhuchana Peramuna, who was in the opposition at that particular point, uh, pointed out uh, saying this is a joke y'all are pretty much you know trying to um, suppress the people and try to get everything from the people and that government was a government that brought in so much of uh, heavy uh, uh, taxation on the people and this government as soon as they came they they reversed those things now here you are sitting uh, and doing the same decision which you criticized prior and at that particular point you said let's create a fund Let's, in order to uh, keep this, this uh, you know, fluctuation of prices and fluctuations in the world market, uh, when the prices are high, let's not decrease when, when uh, the oil prices goes down, which happened last year. And at that moment, you all kept the prices uh, stabilized and, uh, you know, get that particular amount. And then when the prices goes up, let's go and uh, pay from that particular fund. Now, everybody wants to know, where is this fund? What happened to it? Right. Well, um, as you may remember, I was not a, I opted out of being a member of the first cabinet of President Gotabe Rajapaksa from November yeah. 2020 to August, sorry, so, I'm sorry, uh, no, November 2019 to August 2020. During that period, uh, there was a cabinet paper placed by the Minister of Finance to establish a Fuel Stabilization Fund. The title was Fuel Stabilization Fund. But fund suggests to impose a tax on very low, uh, low, uh, low priced oil importation and to credit the fund and to use those funds to settle yeah. loans of Ceylon Electri Electricity Board. They, that's what that bo uh, cabinet paper says. So at Prime of ACA, at, a f at, the, at the glance, it's not a uh, full stabilization fund because stated objective is to Energy. settle loans of the CEB. Though the, that label was there calling full stabilization fund, in reality, in practice, it was not a stabilization fund. It, it was created to settle a problem of CEB, not 
uh, full so, price fluctuation. So money did come to that fund and then the money went out to somewhere else. To the CEB. So it, it, it happened. Yes. Uh, I mean, it, it was it's not... It's not a full stabilization fund. In full stabilization funds, funds, when the uh, prices are low, funds, uh, money come to the fund and those money will be used to uh, invest in different instruments, mainly government bonds and uh, treasury bills. Then whenever prices goes down, goes up, instead of increasing the prices, the uh, funds available in this stabilization fund will be utilized to uh, compensate the, the retailers who are uh, incurring losses because of selling at a lower price. So this is the mechanism. But when prices were going down, uh, money was brought into the fund and used for something else. As a result, when prices were going up, there was no money in that fund to use so for no price right stabilization, now. not at all. Uh, so if by any chance we are talking about uh, a, a fund like that, is the government at work right now uh, trying to figure out to avoid a future increase of fuel prices and actually make this fund to work for that? Actually, that fund uh, created for a different purpose. It's not a, that's what I said, it's yeah. not a uh, fuel, stabilization, fuel stabilization fund. Though that label was there, that's a wrongly labeled cabinet paper. But cabinet paper clearly says those fund, funds will be utilized mm. to settle the loans of the CEB. Then on 15th February 2021, I submitted a cabinet paper after studying uh, different price stabilization instruments used by 28 different countries. Then it's a. Uh, then we discuss about price formula, uh, funds, advantages and disadvantages of these different uh, mechanisms, and what is the best for Sri Lanka with great analysis. In fact, uh, I use my personal friends who are, who are uh, who have the in-depth knowledge about th these things. They volunteer to do research and prepare the cabinet paper. Then. Uh, it was a rising oil market last February. Yeah. Usually uh, oil stabilization funds are established in a declining low, low, market yeah, because yeah. then only we can take the funds out of the... Uh, you can, there, there will be a profit yeah. by selling when you, we are, when you do not change the price. Then only you can accumulate funds in the stabilization fund. So though we have now uh, placed the, the fund, yes. fu the <laughs> fund is in place, but there, it's there empty no at money. the moment. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things, uh, 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 a lot of people say that uh, the taxes that you all impose, the government impose on, on fuel uh, re for the retailers is quite high. And there is a possibility that if you decrease that tax, uh, that would uh, actually bring in a little bit of subsidy to the people. Uh, why haven't the government looked in, in, into that? Uh, there, there is truth in it. There, is, there are taxes. I'm just going to show it. Yeah. Uh, however, I must say, taxes are the lowest the lowest taxes in the recent history are imposed now. For instance, we have a tax of 6 rupees per litre on auto diesel. That was 28 in 2018 during the previous government. Now, government is also in a deep trouble, as I explained earlier. During, this year, uh, during the year 2020, it was an unusual year. Mm. In that year, there was uh, two lockdowns, yeah. then total, uh, uh, total government stop importation of vehicle totally. There was no importation of vehicles whatsoever. So uh, there was a huge tax income from the vehicle importation. It's not. It has come to zero. Tourism came to standstill. No foreign investment. F uh, foreign workers remittance drastically ca came down because around 70,000 people left no their work. jobs and came back to Sri Lanka. Yeah. So government income situation was the worst in 2020. Right? If you look at the central bank annual report for 2020, in table number 6.2, it uh, gives a summary of government income. All government income sources have drastically come down, but one item has been increased. That was import duties or import taxes. Reason, there was a huge tax on 
uh, oil importation because that all other income uh, sources got dried. This was the only available, so the oil prices were extremely low. So government heavily dependent on that. Last year, government earned 150 billion rupees on taxes on oil importation, but government had an additional uh, expenditure called COVID-19 yeah. related expenditures, nearly 300 billion rupees. PCR. Uh, quarantine, uh, government maintained quarantine camps, then uh, 5,000 rupee relief four, four times. They so, so gov government has lost most of its income sources uh, because of the COVID-19. So government is now not in a position to further reduce the taxes on f uh, fuel because people expect government to pay salaries, defense, justice, those are, you know, uh, you, can't, uh, yeah. you can't stop those things. Pay into salaries to health staff, can we stop at this moment? So there is a minimum requirement for government income. On the other hand, imagine for a situation, we reduce the uh, taxes. taxes. But how can we, uh, then people will be encouraged, con con they will consume at their previous levels, then how we are going to find 300 million US dollars for every month. single month to import petroleum products. That is uh, the issue, M not the rupee is not the issue. This increase of prices is not solely to cover the losses, but to discourage people to uh, consume the petroleum products, compel them to be economic. Very quickly, before we go in for a, a break, uh, will these prices uh, come down? Because you said this is going to be very temporary uh, at, at the moment. Uh, do you, uh, w what is the timeline on that? Do you think we will see, uh, you know, reduction of fuel prices? Uh, in I, have, I have not said temporarily. I wish it could be temporary because uh, uh, oil prices are rising in the world market. Dollar is appre uh, uh, appreciating against a rupee. And uh, government has lost other revenues. Otherwise, uh, they should have uh, reduced the taxes. Even if we reduce the taxes, yeah. how we are going to earn dollars? So, we are worried. We know this is an extremely unpopular decision. We, we made this decision being very conscious about it. On the other hand, so, I'm so sorry. On the other hand, uh, we don't find other alternatives. Therefore, uh, ma, uh, we, we can't say when are, when are we going to reduce the prices because we are working with very uncertain variables. We don't know whether when we are going to have a Get stabilized up. rupee. When we, we don't know when we are going to have a stabilized oil market. And we don't know when we are going to improve our foreign currency reserves. Price revision upward or downward entirely depend on three variables international oil prices uh, exchange rate and our uh, foreign currency reserves all right, uh, let's take a short commercial break. I'm in conversation uh, with Energy Minister Uday Gamban Pillar with regard to the current uh, fuel price hike. Uh, the minister was explaining exactly why the government came to that decision and uh, why they had to do. Um, the picture seems to be very bleak economically. So there's a lot uh, that needs to be done from the government. Uh, you're watching it here. We'll be right To get real, I'm um, in conversation uh, with uh, Energy Minister Uday Ramban Pillar with regard to the current fuel price hike and also uh, its cascading effects. Uh, Minister, um, so when you did the, uh, when this happened, when you came out and announced to the people the government has increased fuel prices, uh, well, the, the hell, you know, opened up and started hammering you. But we saw something that we haven't seen before. Like we've seen uh, uh, these kind of unpopular decisions taken by ministers prior, but the government stood, the ruling party uh, specifically stood with you. 
uh, stood with those ministers. Uh, if you take, uh, you know, the finance minister, Ravi Karunanayake, he faced a new confidence motion and all that. But that entire government stood by and said, you know, no, this is it. In fact, uh, some of the SLFP people went and stood by uh, Ravi Karunanayake in, in, in those new confidence motion when you all were fighting uh, in the opposition. We saw the, the general secretary of the ruling party making a statement which was like, I mean, never have we have heard. What's happening? What, what, what's going on there? First of all, uh, as you correctly pointed out, <laughs> did you please no, off, you know? <laughs> no energy minister, yeah. no energy minister in the past has announced the full price hike. It was announced by the Minister of Finance. Yeah. Now, in 1994, uh, Mrs. Uh, CBK, Chandrika Bandaranaika announced the uh, sharp decrease of petrol price from 50 ru rupees to 35 rupees in her capacity as the finance minister. Secondly, you may uh, recall 26 January 2015, Ravi Karunanayake, in his capacity as the minister of finance, finance. he announced the uh, decrease of fuel prices by 35 rupees. Thereafter, Mangala Samarivir, then finance minister, monthly announced increase yeah. in or decrease in of fuel prices. Formula. Right, that uh, well known <laughs> fuel price formula. But can you remember who was the minister of energy at that time? Nobody can remember. Yeah, Why? True. He never came to the, came before media and talked about the fuel price hike or decrease or whatever. This was finance minister's job. Our prime minister is the finance minister. I took the burden from him to explain this to the nation. So I, I came he, uh, forward to save Prime Minister. And I thought that uh, I can appear before, I, I, we knew that this is an unpopular yeah. decision. P there will be attacks, so there must be, there must be somebody to come before media frequently and explain what happened. So I volunteered, I must say, nobody assigned me, I volunteered to explain this, then uh, I must gratefully recall uh, my friend, uh, State Minister Niwad Kabral, also volunteered to join me to explain this. Considering the... Uh, the backlash. Uh, because, you know, because of the very weak economic situation of the country. Then, I have done something. I have announced a decision taken by the entire government, uh, headed by the President and the Prime Minister. Secondly, I have uh, done a, I have played a role, should I have been played by Prime Minister in his capacity as the Minister of Finance. Having such, such a situation, the General Secretary of the SLPP issued a statement demanding my res resignation. Uh, well, if Sagar Kariyavasam, in his personal capacity, issued this statement, nobody would have been yeah. bothered or cared about it. But he used his official title as a general secretary yeah. of the SLPP. He issued on a letterhead of the SLPP with the uh, photograph of the, the um, prime, uh, minister. prime minister. So, th this, as you said, this reflects there is a split within the government. And that's, that's what I was trying to get to. The uh, main to. political party challenged the president and the prime minister and the senior ministers. Because president, okay. Uh, I, uh, the price was increased on Friday in the night. Uh, Saturday in the evening, uh, Sagar Karivasam issued his statement. Soon thereafter, Sunday, President in writing said, this was a collective government decision. This was decided by the Cabinet Subcommittee on Cost of Living, chaired by me with the participation of the Prime Minister. Then, they should have been silent. Okay, okay, this is not, this is not Gammam Pillar, but uh, from the very top. Yeah. So as the uh, disciplined party members, we should, if we have an issue, we should have, we should discuss internally rather than making public that's, that's, statements. That's exactly what I was trying to get to. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, internal dirty clothes being displayed <laughs> in public, uh, which of course could have sorted it out. Now, uh, it, it also beats the question is that, uh, this is what the opposition has been saying for some time, saying that, you know, uh, the president's party members and the uh, supporters of the president in the government and the supporters of the prime minister in the government are, are two factions and then they're headbutting. Is that what we are seeing right now? No, not. No, this was a decision made by the 
by a committee chaired by the president with the participation of the prime minister so this group very minor insig insignificant number of parliamentarians are attacking are attacking both the president and the prime minister then nobody can uh, analyze and explain this as a split between the president and the prime minister because both are under attack uh, opposition uh, milk the opportunity <laughs> and broad is going to uh, bring in a no confidence motion obviously you know we all know it's not going to be successful but you know but then there is that you know the question in your head saying will the government stand with me uh, on this no confidence how confident are you about the no confidence have you ever heard about that i have taken commissions i have asked for bribes or uh, i have misappropriated my powers or misuse facilities given to me i have done my job as a minister uh, in a manner that nobody can question so I should. I don't have any doubt that the government would not defend. And I am. On the other hand, I, as you as you have seen, I am a fighter. I never give up. Yeah. So I want to face this. I'll, I'll ask this question also. Um, in case, let's see things go south. Um, you know, uh, you've been asked to take the blame on this. Uh, and try to calm the nerves of the public or whatever uh, this thing. Will you cross that galley and go to the opposition? And, uh, you know, or will you just take the blame and, you know, keep your mouth shut? Well, as I just explained, why should I get the blame? This was a decision collectively made by the top brass of the government. And I volunteer to explain this to public because of, as a person who understands the bleak situation faced by uh, our country, therefore, I have not done anything wrong. So, I will face the no confidence, uh, no confidence motion and if majority of government members decide to defeat me, I am not going to avoid it. I am not trying to say, look, save me, give me another portfolio and uh, save me. No. I definitely I will face no confidence motion. It's up to the government leaders to protect me because I have no, I have not done anything wrong by the government, by the nation, and to nobody. Therefore, I am confident that the president and the prime minister yeah, will course. take every single step possible to uh, save uh, um, and, to, and to defeat the. No confidence motion. Let's take a short commercial break. When we return, I want to ask the energy minister, what's the solution? We can't be doing this, you know, spending uh, over more than three billion rupee, uh, three billion dollars uh, a month, or with regard to petroleum products and trying to figure out, you know, every every single time trying to buy some kind of loans from various countries and then keep blaming about the cost of living as well. Uh, you can't have uh, the cake and eat it as well. Uh, I'll ask the energy minister what kind of plans the ministry has, he has, the government has, in order to get us out of this crisis. You're watching the video. To get real on the conversation with the Minister of Energy, Udaya Gamban Pillar, uh, we talked about the fuel price hike and also the cascading effect of it, the no confidence motion. Uh, Minister, you clearly painted a bleak picture with regard to the economic uh, standpoint. Um, energy itself, uh, whether it's hydro, the electricity, uh, all the petroleum corporation, all these sectors are making massive losses on a daily basis, not, not, not just a yearly, and, and these losses are huge. We have just made a loss of 57 billion rupees for the last five months. From January to May, 57 billion rupees. My question is, you all have been put into power by the people to find a solution. What's the solution? Yeah, we can't be doing this. Uh, yeah, I, I would really like to hear. The people would really like to hear. What is the solution? Short term, of course, no choice. 
in, uh, be, uh, government should bear the burden as much as possible and pass the uh, part of it to the people. That's what we are doing at the moment. Midterm, we, uh, you know, we have we have not been building a refinery for the last 52 years. The one and only refinery, oil refinery in Sri Lanka, is at Sapukaskanda. It was established in 1969. Since then, no single refinery has been established in Sri Lanka. We have been trying to have a new refinery since 1983. All successive government failed in achieving this uh, goal. Project is so huge, so a lot of management issues are there. Investment is so huge. For instance, uh, we have now planned to upgrade the existing refinery uh, along with the tanks, pipeline and all that and to establish a new refinery with the capacity of 100,000 barrels per day. With this project, we can save 350 million US dollars annually because right now our refinery produce or refine only 25% of our petroleum re re uh, product requirement. 75% we import. But with that, with the new refinery project, we can import crude oil and refine it here to meet the entire national requirement. Minister, I have now a Now let question. me explain this. So, uh, first time after 52 years, we are going to establish a refinery. It's our midterm solution. With three to four years, it will be in place. Yes. Uh, but I have a problem with that. You're still looking at oil. Oil is a, 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 a mineral that is going to you know, pretty much phase out from the world. That's what we are seeing. The amount that they can harvest from the ground is, is decreasing on, on a daily basis. That, what you just said is not a future thinking uh, solution. Future, I mean, we are talking about green energy. Sri Lanka is ultimately designed uh, uh, for, for green energy because we have the, the sea so all across. I, I was to explain. Then, uh, first I want to explain what I'm going to do it because the demand, uh, so I, as you may know, I'm an envi environmental. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I'm a pra environmental practitioner. A Lo lot of people talk about the environment, but it, when it comes to practice, they don't do the environmental practices. But I have been practicing environmental, yeah. uh, uh, environmental norms. And uh, so I'm, I'm very conscious about green energy. I'll come to that. But you know, it takes some time. Firstly, we transform our energy sector. Sorry, electricity, energy se the, the most important. Yeah. We use energy in four sectors, transport, electricity, uh, industries, and households. Then we have started transforming uh, electricity sector for renewable energy. In ni by 1990, uh, entire Sri Lankan electricity requirement was produced with renewable sources. Then we introduce uh, diesel power plants, coal power plants, and uh, uh, then furnace oil power plants. Now we are reversing the situation. We, are, we have recently established 700 mini solar parks, 700 mini solar parks. Then uh, very popular rooftop solar panels. Mm. Several uh, wind uh, parks are in place. In, are in pipeline, but in midterm, it's been doing the electricity sector. But for the transport sector, green hydrogen is the solution. Yeah. But it's very expensive at the moment. We expect it to come down of the prices for us to afford it in three to four years time. Why aren't we looking at the possibility of manufacturing them? them? Because now uh, the government, what we see in certain steps taken, like if you take the pharmaceutical, even Sinopharm vaccine, we are looking at producing it here. So why are we not looking at, at, at that aspect of it? Uh, producing green hydrogen? Uh, uh, no, I mean like, you know, fuel cells. Uh, that we do. That. Actually, uh, there is a Norwegian research and uh, research based company called uh, it's called Hydrostat. Hydrostat. Uh, so we are working with them. Uh, we are going to have a feasibility study. We have discussed uh, with the uh, Norwegian government as well as British government for technical support to launch this program to first do a feasibility study and identify our potential uh, wind and uh, wind and solar capacity to produce green hydrogen. Uh, 
practically let's say someone wants to change his house the dependency on actually the like uh, now i said uh, transforming the transportation sector to green may take some time but meanwhile uh, you forgot very important aspect we have been talking about our gas and uh, petroleum resources in deep sea of uh, yeah, manner yeah, yeah. right yeah. we have been talking about this for last 60 years but nobody was able to materialize or realize this dream but we are working on it we are very very much hopeful that we will be able to take our gas resources out within next 3 years we are running out of time but uh, finally uh, anyone who is at home because a lot of people are green conscious right now they understand even i was like trying to uh, transform my house to see because there are a lot of potential in order to get you know solar panels and all that cost is really high getting solar panels and installing it in your home still is really high no, you not not i mean like there is a certain sector of people who can do that uh, is the government looking at making it available in a cheaper price so that people everybody will be start doing it first of all i must say that to my portfolio is minister of energy uh, electricity is one of the main subsets of energy is a separate ministry headed by minister dalal salapuram mm. then he have a state minister duminda disanayaka for renewable energy however uh, prices of the solar panels are sharply coming down around 20 years ago when solar uh, panel market was dominated by germany and israel <coughs> so panels were very expensive yeah. with the entry of china into this market prices have sharply come down and uh, now we are planning to introduce a package cb will introduce the panel on your roof free of charge then cost will be deducted from your electricity bill because the, with net metering system during the day time you will s- supply the uh, electricity to the grid and in the night uh, you will take from the grid uh, then in the rural areas we will supply battery powered solar panels because uh, yeah. it's um, it's cheaper to give them battery powered solar panels instead of extending the grid considering the cost so those are in place and we are very uh, vigorously implementing our renewable energy plan because uh, i'm that's now, the only solution I, I, now <laughs> I, I'm, i'm disclosing this fact uh, first time in to the media uh, next month you know after paris declaration uh, in 2015 yeah. every nation should announce when they are going to re- achieve net uh, yeah. net zero carbon position so some countries say 2060 most of the countries have de- uh, announced that they will achieve it by 2050 sri lanka will also uh, has planned to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2050 and i am preparing the cabinet paper these days it will be uh, presented within next two weeks then in the month of july we can announce that sri lanka sri lanka has an action plan to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2050 minister of energy udaya gaman pillar who has been in the conversation uh, these days uh, thank you very much uh, sir I, i really hope that i don't get to talk to you uh, as a uh, minister in the, uh, uh, parliamentarian in the opposition uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, speaking to our viewers well that's all the time we have for you tonight thank you very much for joining make sure that you stay positive and test negative i'll see you next time Good night.